Hello, and welcome to St. Mark AME Church. We are thrilled you have gathered with us today for our digital worship experience. Make sure that you are subscribed to our site so that you get a notification every single time we post. Have a wonderful worship experience. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we just come today calling on your name. Lord, for you know all the things that are going on in this world today, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would just continue to be in the midst of it all. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to be with those that are making decisions, dear Heavenly Father, nationally, statewide, and locally, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, anointing them with the direction, dear Heavenly Father, that they should go that will be good for your people, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would just continue to be with us, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, watching over us and guiding us and leading us. Lord, we just thank you for another day, dear Heavenly Father, to be able to worship your name freely. Lord, we know that there is some place people are not allowed to call on the name of Jesus. And we just thank you right now, Lord, for being able to do so. Lord, we ask that you would be with each and every minister that will come forth today, bringing forth your word, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that it will be done in the name of Jesus, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, touching every heart that is listening today, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask that you would just continue to wrap your love in our arms around those, dear Heavenly Father, who might be sick, dear Heavenly Father, and those who have lost loved ones, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we also ask that you would just continue to be with those that are less fortunate, dear Heavenly Father, those that are in need, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you would send your children to be able to be a help and a beacon and a light for those, dear Heavenly Father, that might be lost. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together, dear Heavenly Father. We love you today, Lord. We give your name the honor and the glory and all the praise. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer and we say, Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from John chapter number 6, verses 1 through 15. And it reads, Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wage to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, spoke. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into this world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters, and welcome to St. Mark AME Church. We're so grateful that you continually join us here every Sunday morning during our digital worship service. We're grateful to God to be able to provide you an opportunity to get the messages that the Lord has for us. We ask that you continually be with us, that you continually strengthen yourselves by not only listening to God's word, but also reading God's word, uh, being in prayer, and also finding yourselves uh, to Bible study and church school so that you can learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today, my brothers and sisters, we're, we're so grateful to be back here at St. Mark as we just had our annual conference. 
and we're grateful that we have been reappointed again back to the pastorate here at St. Mark AME Church. We thank God for the opportunity to continue serving the great people of St. Mark, those um, you know who we, we know and we've seen in person, and those who have joined us since we've been in this digital worship format. We praise God for you, and we look forward to the things that God has in store for us. Today, I want to talk to you um, from our text that was read earlier. I want to concentrate on verse number 11 in chapter 6, and it reads, Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Let us pray. Father, thank you once again for this opportunity to come before your people. We praise you, O oh God, for all that you do in our lives. And now, God, we ask that you will hide thy servant behind the cross and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people said, Amen. Wow, what a familiar story. The story that we've heard over and over again. And matter of fact, this story is recorded uh, in all of the four Gospels. Uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000. But let's take a look uh, at this story again, um, because I find that every time I read the Word of God, I find new insights. So let's take a look at what God is saying to us today in this story. And he's really telling us, turn it over to Jesus. No matter what else is going on, he's saying today, turn it over to Jesus. And we'll find in our story today, when we turn it over to Jesus, we will surely and truly be blessed. Brothers and sisters, um, Jesus finds himself ministering to the people and it had got to the point that so many people were following Jesus and they had came from all over the place, different towns. Uh, matter of fact, we know that he, he fed over 5,000 because in the text it says not only there was 5,000 men, but there was women and children there also. So it could have been anywhere from 10,000 to 15,000 persons uh, that were there, but they were, they were listening to the teachings of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it, it came to the point to where the people, Jesus was concerned because he realized that the people needed something to eat. He had compassion enough to realize that they needed something to eat. And, you know, oftentimes when we're doing meetings and we do things like that, uh, we sometimes we think about ourselves. Amen. We get selfish. We don't think about anybody else. We just say, well, I think I need something, you know. But Jesus not only was concerned about the people, but he wanted to make sure that everyone had something to eat. So what he did was he, he looked to his disciples, you know, to see what we could do and um, to, to make sure that we could go take care of the people there. And uh, when Jesus inquired about that, you know, he, he, he asked, he said, um, you know, he did this, the word of God, just to kind of test them out to see what would they do and how would they were going to react. And then Philip says that, it would take more than a half year wages to buy enough to bread for everyone to have some with that. And then the other, other, other disciples, you know, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother spoke up and said, said, here's a boy. He's got uh, five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far is that going to go? Is that going to be enough to go? But Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, wanted to teach them a lesson. For one, he wanted to let them know that he was concerned about people. Brothers and sisters, we got a lot going on in our world today. And sometimes we can get so selfish and we can become uh, in such a way that we're only concerned about ourselves. And we forget that there are other people that stand in the need. Matter of fact, we need to always look to see if we can help and we can be a blessing to someone else. When we're giving things and we have things, we need to look and see, can we share that with someone else or is there anybody else in need? And this is what Jesus saw. He saw that the persons, they needed food. He knew there was a large crowd coming and with all these people, he knew that they were going to be needing something to eat and they had to take care of the situation. But he's trying to figure out what are these disciples going to do? How are they going to react to this? 
And you see one of the first things that happened, they began to think about this is going to cost too much. Isn't that how we do it sometimes? It's going to cost too much for us to be able to take care of all these people. In other words, they began to think about how much it was going to cost them out of their pocket to take care of the people instead of trying to find another way to be able to bless somebody. But Jesus did not stop there. One of the other disciples said, hey, Jesus, you know, guess what? We, we find, found this, this uh, uh, little boy that he had this lunch and, and he has these five barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus began to demonstrate it. Bring it to me. And guess what? They put it in Jesus' hands. Jesus is always going to be able to take what you have and put it in his hands and it's going to be able to be a blessing. Watch what happens after they put it into Jesus' hand. The scripture tells us that when Jesus took the loaves in verse number 11, he gave thanks. One of the things that we have to realize, everything that we have is not because of who we are, but it's because God allows us to have that and he has blessed us with what we have. And brothers and sisters, no matter what it is, we ought to learn how to give thanks. It's very easy sometimes to forget to give God thanks because you're so readily uh, have these things and they're always there and you never have to want. But if you're someone who is, is struggling to make ends meet and you don't always have something, in order to get something, sometimes you are more appreciative of what you get than someone that's just used to having things all, all the time and never run out of anything. Um, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in a position um, to where you saw what others had and you saw what little you had, and you may have desired to have the same thing that they had. But one of the things I learned growing up uh, on a farm, you know, in Alabama, I learned this. I learned to be appreciative for what you already had and not trying to want what someone else had, but to be thankful for what you had. I'm so thankful to God that my mom and dad instilled that in us early on that you may not have what everybody else have, but be thankful for what you do have. And, and God took what they had. They only had the five barley loaves and the two small fish, but Jesus gave thanks. And if Jesus can take time to give thanks with what's put in his hands, oh my, what should we do with the things that God has put in our hands? Shouldn't we give thanks? In other words, Jesus took what they found there, held it in his hands, and gave thanks to God. Isn't that wonderful? He gave thanks to God for the little that they had. And you're talking about two, five little loaves and two fish, and there's over, over 5,000 people there. But he gave thanks. Gave thanks. And what happens next? When he gave thanks, they began to distribute the food. And not only did they distribute the food, but it says that the people had as much as they wanted to eat. Over 5,000 people are being fed. And then it says once they had had enough, now look at this. Once they had enough, guess what happens after that? He said, gather the pieces that are left over and let nothing be wasted. So they gathered everything that was left over and they filled, come on, help me. This is how awesome the Lord is. They filled 12 baskets full of pieces of barley and fish after everybody had eaten all they wanted. My brothers and sisters, when you take time to turn it over to Jesus, he'll be a blessing. And whatever you have, he will multiply what you have to make sure that it's enough to take care of what you need. 
You can be in a situation where you can say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Trust in God. Take what you have and let him control it. Sometimes we have really have enough to make it, but we don't use it wisely because it's in our hands and we don't know what to do with it. But if we place it in the hands of the Lord and we be able to understand that God has our best interests at heart and that he promised that he would never leave us nor he would he forsake us, he will make a way out of no way. And he blessed this small lunch and he fed over 5,000 people because they were willing to take what they had and they put it in the hands of the Lord. Whatever you're going through, whatever you, you have going on in your life, and sometimes it's just not, it, it, it could be a situation where you don't have enough food. It could be a situation where your finances are not enough. It could be a situation where you have an illness or something like that that's going on in your life, and you've been struggling with it and trying to take care of it on your own. Turn it over to Jesus. Not only will he take care of it, but you'll be the better for it. And my brothers and sisters, those that was gathered there that day saw a miracle happen. They saw the fact that if they let Jesus take care of their situation, that he would make everything all right. Jesus took the loaves and he made something happen because he saw that the people were in need. Do not fret of all the things that are going on in our land today. Do not get dismayed or disheartened about the things you see on the news day in and day out. Jesus is still watching, just like he watched those who came to sit and to hear and to listen to his teachings of the gospel message. He sees us today. He sees what's happening in the world. He sees everything that's going on. And my brothers and sisters, just like he saw those persons and he knew that they were hungry for food, he knows that we are hungry today for his word. And all we have to do is to come together in one place or in one mindset to trust and believe in him and his word and turn everything over instead of putting our trust in man or the politicians or all of these other things. Learn to trust and depend on the Lord and put things in his hand. He will take care of you. Not only will he take care of you and be able to sustain you from day to day, but just like in the story, there'll be more than enough left over after you've, he's given you everything that you've needed. And sometimes that's how we are. He wanted the disciples to see that not only do you need to serve people, but you need to be thankful for what you have. And if you trust me enough, Jesus said, that's what he's saying to them. He said, if you trust me enough with what I have given you, I will bless it so that you can be a blessing to other people. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And that's what he continues to do in our lives. He continues to bless us with what we have because we're in his hands. Did you know that? Just like the five loaves and two fish were in his hands, we're in his hands. And he's giving God thanks for us. For God so loved the world. God created us to be blessings. And we're in the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he is giving thanks. And he's giving thanks for us and who we are. 
because he wants us to be a blessing. There are many that are coming. There are many that stand in need of a word. They don't need just any word. They need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he wanted to know the disciples to know that you have to go and do the work. And when you go and do the work, don't be afraid, don't fret, because whatever you forever or whatever you find your situation is, whatever it is, or wherever you are, I still can supply all of your needs. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ does for us. And we see in our story, my brothers and sisters, that not only were they, did they have everything left over, not only were they blessed in such a powerful way, but look at this. It says that after the people had saw what Jesus had performed, they began to say, surely this must be the prophet who is coming to the world. And Jesus, knowing that they intend uh, to make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Jesus wanted to understand he wasn't coming to just be the little earthly king that they look for. He was coming to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he didn't want them to get things twisted. Didn't want them to get things misunderstood. He just wanted to be who God had sent him to be. Be that Jehovah Jireh, a provider that provides all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So whatever you're going through, turn it over to Jesus. He can make everything all right. No matter what you stand in need of, if you got a little and you need some more, turn it over to Jesus. He can multiply it. If you got an illness or a sickness that's going on and you can't handle it and you know that you've been trying, turn it over to Jesus and see won't he work it out. Because just like he took the two fish and five loaves, he took that into his hands. He gave thanks and he blessed over 5,000 persons. He's still in the blessing business. He's still making the ways out of no way. Turn it over to Jesus and watch what can be done in your life. Continually, continually, continually take everything you have and put it in the Lord's hands and you will see a blessing that you have never seen before. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us today at St. Mark Amy Church. And uh, we hope the message today um, encourage you to continue to strive to do whatever God has called you to do in this season. Now, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we ask that you just pray this simple prayer with us today. So, Lord Jesus, I come right now a sinner saved by your grace. I ask you now, Lord, to come into my life and save me right where I am so that I may be whole in you and that I may be a blessing to you and to others. I accept you now as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, my brothers and sisters, welcome to the kingdom of God. We're so grateful that you have made that decision. Please contact us here at St. Mark to let us know the wonderful decision that you have made. And also, if you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a place to fellowship with, to have Bible studies, to be encouraged with our church school, and also our new members program, we would love to be able uh, to help you through this process. And we'd love to be able to be a part of your life and to help you as you grow in Christ. We thank you for, again for joining us today. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. Keep on remembering and never forget.
that if you turn it over to Jesus, everything will be all right. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon. Take care. What a mighty word from the Lord. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we want to pray with you. Use the contact information on the screen and someone from St. Mark will reach out and pray with you. Also remember, we are still continuing to praise the Lord in this digital space. We have our prayer calls on Tuesday, our weekly Bible study on Wednesday, and then our church school on Sunday morning. Visit our website to find out all about the specific times. Finally, if you would like to continue to support this ministry through donations or tithes and offering, visit our website. We hope that you have a wonderful time worshiping the Lord with us today. In Jesus' name.